Hello everyone, welcome back to the part 3 of this Golang tutorial. So in this video we're going to continue where we stopped in the last one. So uh, in the last one we did create this uh, register function who finally uh, was taking a, a payload where we have email password, confirm password and username and we um, try to register a user. So we were uh, doing a get by email to check if a user already exists with this email. We did the same with username because email and username are gonna be unique in, in our app and we want to check that. After that, we did set the password, we did create the user and we push it. The thing is, how can we at least receive a destruct object and be able to work with that and go? So in the last video, we did stop right there now here is going to be the place where we're going to uh, kind of uh, decode uh, the JSON. So in Node, because JSON are already JavaScript object, we do not need to kind of marshal, unmarshal and stuff like that. It's all like kind of for free. But in other programming language, you need to do uh, this kind of stuff. So here, this is what we're going to do. So here, uh, Golang have a JSON uh library right there where they have a new decoder so this came from encoding json and this thing take a io writer and the beauty of uh, using uh, like chai would already use the net package and stuff like that it's now we have access to uh, the body who this one follow this interface io writer reader and now what that mean it's now we can decode the body to a certain interface so now we can pass an interface and now here what we can do it's we can create uh, the payload who's gonna be a register a domain sorry domain the register payload and now here I can pass it to uh, this decode and now by doing this what's gonna happen it's this payload now it's gonna be filled with the JSON and if you look here we did say JSON uh, email password confirm password username so this JSON uh, decoder are gonna look at those tag and they're gonna give you um, the, the, the they're gonna finally decode that to those value now here, if we have an error, we need to send back something to the user. And here, we want to kind of close the life cycle of this handler. So first thing I'm going to return. So I don't want to go further if I have an error here. And now here, what I want to do is I want to create, I want to send back to the user a JSON response Why they're going to see an error, okay? So the way you can do this, it's with the W, with the response writer right there. I can have a headers and I want to set the content type to application JSON. So we want the headers, uh, the, the, the headers we're going to return to be in JSON format because we write a REST API. That's why here after that, I also want uh, to write inside header at status code. So for now, I'm going to put the bad request. So you see HTTP, they have some variable already created with our int, where finally that's a bad request give you 400. I would, I can have put 400, but the thing is, I feel it's easier to read to see the status, what the status mean. After that here, I'm going to do another if error and I'm going to encode to this IO writer. So you need to follow the IO writer interface and the uh, response writer already do this. And I'm gonna encode some stuff here. And um, after that, I'm gonna check if the error is not nil. So this um, if statement, what that means, it's if we receive an error from that, and the error is not near, you do this. So finally, just that would have been the same to do like without this if and doing the if error after something like that. And uh, that would have been the same, but now I can do this in line and I feel it's 
much cleaner and easier to read but it's your choice and now here i can put whatever interface i want and you see it's an empty interface and because it's an empty interface you can put whatever you want so now here it's um I, uh, the thing i'm gonna want to uh, give back here for now i'm gonna just create it right there so i'm gonna call that respond and i'm gonna think i'm gonna see it's a map of string string where i'm gonna pass an error and say uh error that error i'm gonna return the error back we got from this decoder and i'm gonna send this response as the value to the encode so it's gonna be like uh, because my plan is to have this kind of javascript object where i'm gonna have error and now here i'm gonna have hello well whatever okay that's why i'm creating this map now here what i'm gonna do is if i'm getting there i want to send an http error why this one thing can take the response writer we have already can take the error uh, error like that and after that i'm gonna send uh, if i'm getting here with an error i'm gonna say status internal error so if i'm getting even an error with this encode value no it's my internal server i have an error i'm gonna send that you can change it it's surely not the best one here but that's going to be that for now and uh, now what i'm going to do it's uh, i'm gonna came here and for now i think i'm gonna just save that and trying that so by removing this now i think that's gonna be i'm gonna be able to uh, to compile so i'm gonna use a gen back to uh, restart my server and I'm gonna open Postman and also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna want to print this payload and see what that's gonna be okay so if we look at the handler at the endpoint sorry we have this uh, setup endpoint and we have nothing yet we have just slash user the thing i want is i want to have a post to register and i want to make use of my s that register user the function we just create so now if we follow that i'm supposed to be able to do a post request to slash user slash register now if i click send I'm getting a 502 uh, okay i don't know why you do this for the first time i'm getting eof this thing happened because um we didn't really check if we can kind of decode nothing this is something we can do later but for now i'm gonna just send an empty uh json object and i'm gonna receive no error i'm gonna receive 200 okay okay but you see the payload is empty i have nothing right there now if i send a username and i send bob you can see now my payload received Bob right there. So yeah, so if you follow what I'm doing right now, you can go there and fill those value. Oh, sorry, come can pass more. And now if I send, we get Bob, password, password and Bob. So yeah, it's now become pretty nice because now what that means, it's now this payload can be sent to this user register and do the logic. But the thing is, I, I don't want to go further in this video because I want to already refactoring a bit of this stuff, okay? So this thing here, it's going to be something we're going to do almost, almost every time, okay? And this thing... It's going to be something again we're going to use so what i want to do it's this thing i want to create a function where i'm going to put that inside my handler and i'm going to create a function called json json response this json response is going to take a w response writer and you're going to take a data who's going to be an empty interface and you're going to receive a status who's going to be an int and now i'm going to paste the code we just have done for the writer uh, right 
header, remember, it take a status code. So now I can put the status. And I think I'm going to rename that to be status code just to follow what they have already. After that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check if the data equal nil. Okay. It's just because I want to make sure that I send back at least an empty object. So I'm going to just say data is going to be a map of string, 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 and it's going to be an empty one. After that, I'm going to remove this response and I'm going to send the data. Now, what that means, it's now here. If I have, if I have um, an error, so if my error is not nil, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a JSON response. Why now I can pass the W. And for the data, I'm going to, um, I should have keep it. Uh, that's going to be a map of string string where I'm going to add error and I'm going to say error that error and now I can pass the response and for the status code I'm going to say I want my bad request so now it should be much better to uh, to uh, to send it and you see we're going to reuse this JSON response a lot now it's if this thing it's something we're going to always want to send when um, we kind of get this kind of error every time. And what I do mean by that is I want to have a function. So you can already copy that. And I'm going to now jump here again. And I'm going to have a function called bad request, bad request response. Okay, I'm going to already create this bad request response. We're going to just make our life easier again. This thing going to need again the response writer and also going to need an error. And now by doing this, I can just clean up a bit more my code. And now here, I can just say, hey, if I have an error right there, just send the error like that and return to make sure it stopped. That's it. And I feel it just make more sense to have something called a bad request response. Now, the thing is, I, I, I will not want um, this payload to never get finally to this point and be passed to this register if this payload do not have some kind of validation, okay? Because right now what we do we do a validation about do the user email exist? Do the user username exist? That's it. After that, we set the password. We, we're good to go. Nothing stop. Like we do not have kind of a validation step. And this is something I want to do. Okay. It's something uh, we're going to need to do because right now uh, everything going to be passed. Example, I would like if I pass pass. Sorry, I'm going to make it bigger. If my confirm password do not match my password, I would like here to receive an error who say, finally, uh, hey, the, the, the confirm password and password should match. But right now, it, it go. So that means this register uh, function going to have been called with data we don't going to be kind of uh, checked before it go further. So this is really bad. Uh, what I want to do, Okay, you can use library for that. You can do whatever you want for that. But for me, I, I, I want to create it um, by myself just so for us, we can learn a bit more Go and all to deal with that. So that's going to be the plan in the next video. So in the next video, we're going to create our own kind of validator library where this one's going to just finally make sure that we validate all, uh, all those things and also this validator gonna make sure then the way we're gonna return it, it's gonna be an object of each error as a key. So example, the plan is to return an email, uh, an error, uh, sorry, an object with an email key say email is not valid. With a password key say email uh, password is not long enough. With a confirm password key we say confirm password do not match password. And a username will say maybe something like already exists. Because if you see here, we already send those errors. So this is something uh, we're going to do in the next video. 
and I'm pretty sure we're gonna learn a lot from that. So I hope you enjoy what we've learned uh, in this one. That was not that uh, as big video like uh, the part number two, but yes, uh, it's a step forward. So have a good day, everyone. Bye.